In this lesson, we're going to work back and forth between surfaces and solids. Let's get started by making a brand new part in SolidWorks using one of your infinite skills template files. Now let's create a rectangle centered on the origin on the front plane. Now I'm going to extrude using a mid-plane setting and just drag this out to an arbitrary depth. Hit the right mouse button to accept. Now you see what we've got is just an open surface body. It's a single surface body with four faces, and we've got a single feature here created from a single sketch. Let's go back and edit this feature, and this time let's use the cap end option. Now remember what the definition of the difference between a solid and a surface is. A solid is really just a surface that is an enclosed volume and all the faces touch at edges with no gaps or overlaps. This volume now meets that criteria with the cap end function. Let's see what happens if I hit the green check. SolidWorks has created a solid body using a surface feature. It's hard to say if this is a quirk or if it's a bug. But just be aware that surfaces and solids can be very interchangeable. Let's now use the delete face function and delete three of these faces. So now I have a three sided open box that's a surface body. I can go through and recreate this as a solid. Let's use a planar surface first, selecting these two straight lines. Let's do that again. I'll hit enter on the keyboard to copy the last command. And now for this final surface, since it's not going to be planar, let's use a filled surface. Notice the interior edges here are blue rather than black. This means that I have a series of surface bodies. I can join these together using knit, so that is one body, and the two triangular faces are separate bodies. Now they're joined together into a single body. Notice that the edges that were blue are now black, and notice that these open edges are still blue. Let's now close this off using another planar surface. We've got that, and enter to repeat, and that. Again, we've got three surface bodies. We can knit these together into a single body. Those two faces are individual bodies, and this is a separate body. Notice that when I go from having an incomplete selection to a complete selection, the Try to Form Solid option is automatically turned on. So the Knit is one of those features that you can use to create a solid body from. If I click on the green check, it's knit together as a single solid body. Or edit this surface knit and remove one of the faces. SolidWorks is now going to give us an error saying that it can't create the solid, the solid option is grayed out and checked. So if you're going to do something like this, you have to be careful to uncheck the option first and then unselect the additional face. Okay, this gives us an open body. And let's, for the moment, forget about this particular body that we're just leaving out. I'm going to close that up now with a filled surface. I'll select all three of these open edges, and let's take a look at the options that SolidWorks is giving us. SolidWorks is giving us a merge result option. This is another case where SolidWorks has mixed up the terminology kind of badly. The way they've done it is they say merge result, but they don't really mean merge result in the same way that they mean merge result when this option shows up in a solid feature. In a solid feature, merge result means that it's going to try to merge this feature with the rest of the solid body. In this situation, merge result means it's going to knit this face into the rest of the surface body. So 
SolidWorks is playing a little fast and loose with the terminology here, and you just need to be aware of your surroundings, understand if you're working in a solid or a surface. Once I've selected the Merge Result option, now SolidWorks will allow me to create a solid directly from this surface body without using any of the other tools. So I can select that. Let's see what happens here. That leaves me with a solid body and this remaining surface body that we had before. Let's go back to the surface fill and turn off the Try to Form Solid. So now we've got an enclosed surface body and then an extra surface body just sitting on top. Let's take a look at something that happens quite often. If we have a surface body on top of another surface body and then one of the surface bodies just happens to be a different color, very frequently you'll see the colors kind of competing for space on this face. You just have to be aware that there is another face under there that belongs to the other body. Now one of the other tools that allows us to make a solid from a surface is under Insert, Boss Base, Thicken. And if I select this body, there are two different ways that I can thicken this. First of all, notice that because I've selected an enclosed volume, SolidWorks gives me the option to create a solid from enclosed volume. If I don't select that and just use the regular thicken, it's going to use this number to add a thickness to every wall. So if I look at this in cross section, it looks like it's been shelled out. Get rid of that and go back to the thicken command. Change this. I'm going to just select the create solid from enclosed volume. Notice that when I do that, the thickness value is grayed out because it's no longer valid. And if I take a section view of that, notice that it's solid all the way through. Here we have solids and surfaces and the ability to walk back and forth between them. In practice, you won't go back and forth frequently between solid and surface, but you need to know how to be able to do that. And in parting, let me just show one more thing. I want to go back before this thicken. And I'm actually going to delete this surface body. I'm going to do it in a different way. I'll just click on it in the surface body folder and then press delete on the keyboard, which brings up a special feature that's called delete body. Now it's interesting that that feature is called delete body because it really doesn't delete anything. It just makes it inaccessible. So if I were to roll back before that feature, Notice that the body shows up again, so it really hasn't been deleted. Now let's place a hole through this while it's in its surface form that shows how much work SolidWorks is saving us when it creates holes in solid parts. I'm going to open a sketch on this top face and draw a circle that overlaps this line. And I'm going to extrude the other way, so it goes all the way through the part. Now what I want to do is use the trim feature, and I'm going to use a standard trim. The trim tool will be this cylinder that I just created, and I want to change this to remove selections. I'm going to remove the inside and the inside. Okay, so now I've got a hole but I've also got this surface that's way too big. Let's use the trim surface again, standard again. This time we'll use this body as the trim tool. And the remove selections this time will be this little moon selection and this cylindrical selection. Okay, now we're good. But we can see that there's still some blue edges here, so we still have a surface body. Notice that when I finished that trim and then started the knit, the trim was automatically added to the selection, even though you can't see it selected in the graphics window. This is just one of those quirks in SolidWorks that sometimes makes it difficult. So I'm going to right click in the box and clear the selection. From here, I'm going to select 
both bodies so I can visually see that everything is selected. I'll check the gap control to make sure that there are no gaps. If there are gaps in here, you want to select them. If the gaps are larger than the range, then SolidWorks will not be able to knit those surfaces together. I also want to try to form solid, so I'm going to check that, then click OK. So that allows me to have a solid created from that surface body. And you see that with all of that extruding, trimming, knitting together, that SolidWorks, when it creates a hole for you in the solid, is really saving you a lot of time by using automated techniques.